All right, let's talk about your pocketbook, shall we? The U.S. economy grew more than expected in the second quarter. New data shows uh, GDP increased 2.8% annually. Seems like a good number, but this is still down from the second half of last year. Let's bring in New York Times Federal Reserve and U.S. economy reporter Gina Smilek to help us understand what this really means. Uh, Gina, what does this report tell us about the state of the economy? Yes, it seems as if there's some growth. Where is that being fueled from? But what is the overall picture? Yeah, I think it's actually a very optimistic overall picture. What we're seeing is that there is growth being fueled from a number of places. We're seeing pretty solid business investment. But most importantly, we saw a strong consumer in this report. They were still spending on goods. They were still spending on services. And I think that's really encouraging because the consumer is really the engine of the American economy. And I think as the job market has come off the boil a little bit, as it's slowed down and unemployment has started to really sort of creep up a bit, people have been watching to see if the consumer stops spending so dramatically. And I think what we're seeing here is a consumer that is still pretty willing to open their wallet. There's one thing Americans like to do, it's spend um, and get a good deal and a sale. Have, though, we staved off a recession based on some of this new data? You know, I think that most of the economic data we're seeing right now, and certainly this report, suggests that we are heading for that sort of soft landing that everybody had hoped we might be able to pull off. It doesn't seem like growth is falling off a cliff. This was stronger than the, the report we saw at the start of the year. It was a little bit stronger than what many economists had expected. I think we're really seeing a situation where we're sort of gently landing this economy. It's not, it's not crazy growth the way we were seeing in, say, 2021, but that was never sustainable. I think when you talk to most economists, they'll say, this does look a lot more sustainable. This looks like the kind of gentle come down that we were hoping the economy could achieve. And I'm, of course, curious about how this relates to a potential uh, interest rate cut later this year. Um, I'm curious if you think that makes it more likely. Yes. I think this is very much the sweet spot for the Federal Reserve, this right. report. <laughs> They have been trying to signal that they are not going to necessarily jump into rate, rate cuts very, very quickly, but they also clearly want to make them at some point in the future. And I think what this report allows them to do is not rush into it. It doesn't suggest that they need to just get going and cut in July, but it does suggest that they're probably in good shape to cut in September. So I think what we're most likely to see is that the Fed's next meeting, the one coming up just next week, we're likely to hear them sort of teeing up a coming move. And then I think markets are going to solidify around expected a rate cut at that following meeting after that, which comes in September. Uh, okay. so, so good news for the Fed here. I want to ask you about um, the federal minimum wage, because this week actually marks 15 years since it increased, which is kind of stunning. And it's, in fact, the longest stretch minimum wage has gone without an increase since the pay standard was instituted in 1938. And as you all know, as viewers know, the value of the dollar has diminished meantime. CPI indicates the spending power of $1 is about 70% of what it was back in 2009. So what does that tell us as people continue to spend um, and the economy seems to be heading towards this soft landing, but our dollar isn't going as far? I think one thing that we've really seen in this economy over the last 15 years, even longer than that, is a real bifurcation that has mm. been only exacerbated by the pandemic. And so when you see folks who are actually earning the minimum wage, which is a relatively small slice of America, but people who are sort of at those lower wage levels, they are really struggling in this economy. We're seeing um, delinquency rates on credit card debt go up. We're seeing many signs that people at the very bottom end of society are struggling. I would say that, you know, Above that, people who are making a bit more money, the middle class, the upper middle class, they're doing okay in this economy. We're really seeing wage growth that is handily beat inflation. And that has been true for year, for a couple of years now. You know, I think we're seeing over the longer term that people ha have seen their, their wages start to keep up with inflation. Um, and so I think you're seeing that as really sustain a higher income consumer. At the same time, we're seeing pretty so strong gains in the stock market. If you own a house, if you owned a house before interest rates went up, you're seeing pretty strong gains in, in your home price. Is. Um, and all of those things make people feel a little bit wealthier. It makes them feel a little bit more comfortable spending. And so I think it, re it really is the story of a divided economy. Right. Folks really feeling that squeeze uh, on the entry level anyway. Uh, Gina Smiley, great to chat with you this morning. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.